this is at a 45 degree angle. Now most piers in most cities, and, and many of the piers that you, you, you might think about, they come out at 90 degrees. Now, why do our piers here in Seattle come out at 45 degree angle? There are two reasons for this. The first is that at the point where these piers end right now, it is 50 feet deep in water. You just move a couple feet out from that and it drops off to 100 or 200 feet. So the designers had to engineer these piers in a way to, um, it, it, in order to not make them have such crazy long pilings. Also though, this was the center of industry in Seattle's early history. Therefore, they were able to drive these railroad cars on right onto the dock without having to turn them at a 90 degree angle. Just made it quite convenient. The first pier we're passing right now is Pier 60, 56. Excuse me. This is home to Elliott's Oyster House. And this is where you want to be if you love oysters. They have a 21 foot long oyster bar. You can't beat that and you can't find that anywhere but Seattle. The newest addition to our Seattle waterfront and our Seattle skyline is this 175 foot tall Ferris wheel. This is now known as the Great Seattle Wheel. It opened in time for the 4th of July, so it is new. And I, I hope you've had the chance to go up it. It's quite a wonderful ride. You, you, you're able to get three rotations in. And each of those gondolas are heated and air conditioned. So whichever you choose. This meant though that they far exceeded their $13 million budget. And it, and it was 10 years in, in the making, but this this Ferris wheel has now come to Seattle and we're very excited about it. A Kevin Costner fan, this was a field of dreams mentality. If you build it, they will come. Well, they didn't, at least not until four years later. So they built it in 1996. The people of Seattle were quite perturbed for four years until the year 2000 when one of Norwegian cruise line ships came through. And this cruise line was going to Alaska. Now all of the cruise ships here in Seattle go to Alaska on a seven or 10 day cruise. And that's because of Seattle's proximity as well as our city as a wonderful tourist destination. So as soon as these cruise ships started coming, many came and each time a cruise ship comes in now, it generates $1.7 million to our local economy and for that we are very grateful. So it took four years to get here, but once they came, it is doing wonderful things for us. And we actually have two cruise ship terminals. One at Terminal 66, which we're seeing right now, and one at Terminal 91, which we'll see in about 15 minutes. The next pier on our waterfront is Pier 67. This is the gray building with the mustard colored trim. It has the large E on top of it. This is the Hotel Edgewater, aptly named because, well, it's a hotel at the edge of the water. It was supposed to be built in time for the 1962 World's Fair exhibition. Now this World's Fair is a six month long fair, so the owners were counting on this revenue to get with Houston's 54, um, Jackson, Mississippi 61, Miami, Florida is up there as, as well as New York. So why then does Seattle have this reputation? Well, it is because of the clouds and the drizzle. We do not get as many torrential rainstorms that just like dump, dump a lot of inches at one time, but we do just have that famous cloud covering. Alrighty, let's look at the Seattle skyline. How many of you are wondering, or how many of you know, why the Space Needle is painted the color it is painted? Anyone? No? It's the 50th anniversary. Yes. So, the Space Needle was built for the 1962 World's Fair exhibition as the centerpiece. And this is the same World's Fair exhibition that the Hotel Edgewater was supposed to be um, completed for. However, there were not construction delays on the Space Needle because it's the centerpiece and you can't have a World's Fair without its centerpiece. So, believe it or not, this is one of the original colors it, it, it was painted. This is not bright orange, it is galactic gold. And not only was it galactic gold, it was also re-entry red and orbital olive. So leave it to the 60s to paint a building orange, red, and green. Great. The Port of Seattle is known as the Green Gateway in the shipping community, and that's for two reasons, and both of them have to do with the color green, hence the name, of course. But the first is, we are one sailing day closer to our Asian trading partners than other ports on the West Coast. That means you save on money, so green in that way, and you save on fuel, which is green for the environment. So it is a win-win. Now, these gantry cranes that we are crossing under right now they just came to us two weeks ago, fully assembled from China. Fully assembled. 
So they were attached, they were actually welded to a ship that came in from the north. And rumor has it that George Lucas modeled his Imperial walkers after these cranes, so it really did look like a scene from Star Wars as they were coming on down. But what happened is they were welded to this ship, so they had to, I guess, de-weld them. Is, is that the term? I don't know. De-weld them from, from the ship they were welded to, and then they had to wait until the tide was perfectly right so that the ship was level with the dock, and then they just kind of pushed the cranes off. You are able to see a little glass box at the top of these cranes, and that is where the crane operators work. They, they are called longshoremen. So they stand up there all day looking down, and there's the there's the apparatus extending from the cable. Those have um, locks in them that lock onto the intermodal shipping containers. Oh, great. We have a um, bulk cargo ship from China Shipping Lane in over there today. And again, you're able to see how it has a two-toned hull, that green color as well as it kind of looks like a pinky white. So this ship is relatively full because you're able to see more green than the red. Also off on our starboard side, I just want to point you inland a little bit. That brick building with the clock tower and that oh-so-famous siren on top of it, that is the Starbucks International Headquarters, and it's where they're plotting to take over the world. You laugh, you laugh, but can anyone guess how many Starbucks there are in the five-mile radius from Pier 55 where you boarded um, where, where, where you boarded this, this tour? 203. It's not quite 203, it's, it's, it's half of that. It is 108, but do remember that half of that five mile radius is in water. So I, 